Good evening everybody and welcome to another video by Minecraft Dr. Vell. So as everyone can see in front of me is the brand new city of Melchizedek Detention Center. So this building here, the blue and white one structure, is the Melchizedek Sheriff's Office. So, this building is a 1,228 bed facility holding all inmates regardless of age and gender. So, anytime a prisoner is brought into our facility, they will arrive through here. And from anywhere in the city, this includes the public transit system. Although they have their own jail, if they have to stay longer, they will come through this gate. So, everybody uses the sally port, officers' cars. This is a City of Melchizedek police car. These two are KRTA police cars. So, the officer is responsible for opening the sally port. Of course, this sally port will always be closed anytime this one is open. Once they drive in, they will park using whichever door the prisoner is in will be aligned with these lines. If it's an underage inmate, such as a juvenile, it would be a blue line. If it's an adult inmate, then it would be a yellow line. Once the officer is parked, before attempting to let the prisoner out of the car, they are responsible for closing the sally port door. Let's start with adult booking. So, once the inmate has been removed from the car, they will then go through this door. Any amount of inmates that has arrived in this facility will line up on this wall right here. Now, once these inmates have finished getting searched right here, this is a preliminary search. So they're gonna get wanted down with metal detectors. They're gonna get a uh, pat down. So this is a little um, above the grade of a terror frisk. A terror frisk is just simply searching for weapons. A uh, pat down is where everywhere is patted down in the hopes of there being no weapons, no contrabands, no drugs, nothing made out of metal. This is a full-scale pat-down. Of course, once this is done, the inmates would come into this room. Any evidence that has been seized will go into these lockers during the pat-down. Now, of course, throughout the facility, there are multiple stations in the booking area. Terry frisks can still be done on a random basis. Inmates would try to hide things, but the most important one to search for the most obvious things were done by the entrance. This desk is the office. This is where your charge is, so anytime you come in, you will speak to the clerk here. They will put together all of your charges, what you've been charged for. You'll receive your paperwork. So this desk only deals with identification and charges. Now, over here, you can get fingerprinted too, but usually that would be done at that desk there with the fingerprints. This is just ID. Once we ID you and charge you, with whatever you did, you will then move over here to receive a mugshot. You see these lines in the floor? Inmates will wait on these lines until it is their turn to take their mugshot. If for any reason we can't get to an inmate at any point in the booking, booking process immediately, they will then sit in this red zone waiting room. But when it is time for your mugshot, you enter the room. You stand facing the camera, the officer would take your photo, and upon that, you will then go over to the property office. Once you are at the property office, you are going to surrender all of your personal belongings, 
leaving only your shirt and the and your pants. Those will be surrendered during the strip search. So your shirt and your pants will be left on. Everything else will be removed at your property office. You go over here to get fingerprinted. Once you're fingerprinted at this desk, all of your information is now added to the Federal Bureau of Investigations list. So now everything is on record with the FBI here. One note, once you get past here in this area where you have your last chance to surrender all of your property, anything else that is found on you it's only going to make matters worse. Please do surrender everything at this desk. Now, once this has been done, you will be taken into the showers for a strip search. So, it depends how busy booking is. This is not a very high capacity booking room, but then I've seen smaller. The Alex World Detention Center has a very tiny booking room. So this is kind of high capacity in comparison. Either way, it's the law. You have to take a shower upon entering the jail. You have to surrender your clothes. The jail has to take your clothes. And it's federal law that all inmates get a strip search upon entering these types of facilities. Once they have surrendered their clothes once they have done the complete strip search it's kind of sort of what you see on TV but not a hundred percent a cavity search is not necessarily as how you see it on TV sometimes the inmates would have to squat and cough sometimes they'll have to spread their legs but that is not as routine as you think it is that would be based on a combination of your history and what was found during the pat downs and all the other random Terry Frisks that's been happening. Plus, you do have to take a shower. Depending on your classification level will depend if your um, shower is supervised or not. Once the shower is finished, you will then be issued your prison clothes. Some people, it's not so obvious what size they wear. So what they're going to have to do is now um, uh, just a, a robe-like thing. It looks like the prison uniform, but really it's just a robe. Will be provided to them, and then they will have to go and make this walk right here to where all of the prison clothes are. 95% of the time, prison clothes will already have been provided at the time of the shower it depends who's running the shift whether or not you get all of your belongings first and set them over there or if they just bring you your prison clothes and then have the prisoner search shower change into the clothes and then bring the prisoner back and um what they'll do is come in this room now grab their toiletries grab their hygiene products grab their mat whatever they need to sleep on and just the bare necessities that are needed now I kinda do have to admit the layout of this booking area I really wish the the stock room for all the clothes would have been probably right here or closer to the showers because this is you have to walk past all these people. Now you have red zone people right next to the green zone, which is people that are getting discharged. Red zone is people that are still being booked and have not finished booking. This gray, you'll find out what it means later. So if you're drunk, you're going to end up in here. This is the holding tank. This is the drunk tank. So you'll be put in here until you're sober enough to continue with the um, booking process. Once you have been, you know, ID'd, your photo taken, washed, cleaned, put in new clothes, prison garments, and have all your supplies, you are now going to go to medical. The medical screening typically takes 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how many people are in here. I've seen it been as quick as 10 minutes. I've seen it taking as long as almost an hour. It depends how many people are getting arrested. It's a cosmopolitan area, so 
it happens. While you are in this medical area, you're going to be screened for things like tuberculosis. You'll have your blood taken. Sometimes you'll go down to the end of this hallway into an x-ray room. Sometimes you will have drug tests. Sometimes you'll be asked an extensive medical history. You'll be asked psychological questions. You'll see a psychiatrist. You'll see a nurse. You'll get your medications together, whatever you need. Sometimes you'll have to have a mental health evaluation and then some very basic questions will be asked for the first time. Do you think about harming yourself or others? And are you suicidal or homicidal? So you'll be asked that here. And then now, once you're finished with medical, you are now going to go to the last stage of the booking process which is right here and what's going to happen is you are going to now hear whether or not you will be staying in the jail you'll hear how much your bond is charges will be rendered if you're if the law states that you have to be let out or you can't be held then that's what happens so this is just the bare interpretation of the law. If you have to go to court, then you will most likely end up staying the night in the facility. If it's, if it's, let's say for example, Friday, you'll have to stay in the facility until Monday. So all of these things will be done here as well as your classification. So at the classification desk, what happens here is we want to assess are you in any gangs are you are you a part of the LGBTQ community do you have any mental illnesses anything that determines what pod you should be in now usually you come to this desk if you're not going home sometimes you do because it could be bond related so whatever happens here if you're staying the night or if you're getting if you're getting admitted you will follow these gray um you will follow these gray stones tiles if you're going home you just need someone to come and pick you up and post your bail you will have a seat in the green area but it can also be used to determine people who are waiting for medical so let's just say the grim happens and you're staying in jail. You're not going anywhere. Well, you will follow these gray tiles and they will lead you to a door. This door is protected by iron bars so it makes it not easy for people to run out and away even though there's nowhere to run to because all entrances are behind someone's desk. Once you go through these two doors, you will now go into receiving. So now the grim reality hits when you see this hallway. You're in jail. You're not going anywhere. You will now go into this room to where you will wait for a bed to open up. Because sometimes the jail could be full. Sometimes you could end up waiting in here for a few hours. Sometimes it could be a few minutes. Oftentimes you won't have to wait in here at all. You will be taken straight to your block. May I remind you, this is the adults ward, so children will be on the other in the other tower. So down this hallway, this is your north. This is your north tower. Down this hallway, this is gonna be your west tower. Your east tower, excuse me. And then this is also going to be your northeast tower so if you get assigned to the northeast tower the northeast tower is the general population tower so this is where you want to be so if you're in the general population tower there are five stories to this tower each of them each of the pods having two floors so this pod is called 1NE so 1NE stands for first floor northeast tower. So 
all of these pod doors, each pod can hold up to 24 inmates. This is the guard's desk protected with glass. This is the pod shower. This one has not been installed yet. And then this is the day room for the pod. So this is pod 1 and E. If you get booked into pod, if you get into the East Tower, the East Tower is somewhat of a specialty general population. The East Tower comes with also five floors. So five pods stacked on top of each other, 10 stories in total, but it goes up to 5E. This is pod 5, 1, 5. I mean 1E. So on the pod 1E, this will be, let's say for example, pods that deal with general population under the name of sexuality. So 1E is for people who are non-binary, so people who, it doesn't matter what their sexual preference is, they don't have a preference, and it's safe to house them together because, you know, sex isn't going to be an issue. 2E is for homosexuals, people who extremely same-sex men that wants other men. Of course, there is a variation of isolation that requires from the 2E and 3E. 3E is lesbian pod. 4E is going to be transgenders. So anyone that has transgendered from a male to a female or from a female to a male, basically no interest in the opposite sex. You're, you are the opposite sex and wanting your own sex. That is going to be 4E. 5E is you being the same sex wanting the same sex. So that is going to be 5E. So when you think of East Tower, East Tower is the differential alternative lifestyle pod. So if you come over here down this hallway, these are general population pods. These are alternatives lifestyle pods. Now you have variation pods, which are all about security. We will not go through all of these because it would make the video extremely long. This is your pod that is for discharge. So inmates come here when they're getting ready to be released. It's easier this way because they could be through this pod straight down this little tiny hallway and it would take them right into release plus they have very good stairwell access there that would take them upstairs into the releasing area so this is the honors pod honors pod are for people that will be released within 24 to 48 hours but then as you start to go upstairs you're gonna see in fact it's not as rosy as the bottom floor. So there's a few stops we're going to make on along the way. First, I want to show you the general population yard. So general population inmates would come down here. Through here, don't worry about this door because this is for the juvenile pod you can't get re-entry to this door so you can't go through there you can come out but you can't go in that's there for fire emergencies so in this pod this pod is assigned to the adult general population and this is the alternative lifestyle area too of course only one pod moves around the jail at a time in this pod, you're going to have 24 people in this yard right here. This is the largest yard in the facility, by the way. Yeah, so all of our yards are pretty small. 
But gotta remind you, this is jail. In prison, you're expected to be there for longer. Jail, the maximum you could stay here is 900 days. So it's not really useful having all of that space. This is the stairwell that people will take if you need to go to a higher security pod. No active prisoners will go through this door and you'll see why on the way back down. So when you're going upstairs, the first thing you're gonna see is the recreation cages. This is because this is reserved for medium or high risk prisoners. This is a suicide prevention ward, so all of the cells in here are made differently. This down here is solitary confinement. So everybody in the cell, the door stay closed 24 hours a day. However, this is not maximum security. One thing that is very true though, is no matter where you go, yeah, these are more red cages. You're always going to have access to education. This is one of the education hallways. So I'm going to take you into an empty classroom. This is what the classrooms will look like. You see how tiny the window is. So you're going to have furniture for whatever class this is. The chalkboard, the clock. And then, of course, that's how that works. And of course at the end of the hall is an emergency staircase that is not to be used by prison staff. So now let's go up and I'm going to show you something pretty interesting. Oops. Okay. So as we're going upstairs, up, up, and up, you're going to see something that is very, very interesting but also very important to the Department of Corrections. So through this door right here is a helicopter pad. So sometimes inmates have to be flown into jail. The view is nice from up here. Sometimes inmates have to be flown into jail because of their classification and because of their status. So in a situation like this, a helicopter will land here, drop off, or pick up prisoners. Of course, remember Hurricane Katrina. As you see, the flood gradient, this prison had to be elevated so that it cannot flood. And then, of course, as we go downstairs now, inmates would either go through this door or they'll go on one of the wards, on one of the pods over here. I don't know why I keep saying wards. This is not a hospital. So this is an elevator that's going to get built in. This is also a medium security ward. So these are where we put prisoners. Usually prisoners that are trustees. Minimum security prisoners are on work release. Those would be pods that are located on the bottom floor. General population pods that are related uh, that are on the bottom floor. But these would be your trustees prisoners. They would be housed on medium security. This is still the East Tower, so of course every tower has one of these on this floor, no matter what the lifestyle is. But one thing that does need to be shown and we're gonna go downstairs for this we're just gonna go ahead and take a straight shot for maximum security because there's no elevator navigating this prison takes a very long time They always say don't run down the stairs, but that's just, it's too much. It's going to take too much time for me to go crawling all the way around.
Okay. Oops. I have them I have to make a confession too. Up until now I can't even find a stairwell that's supposed to take me upstairs. I mean, this is not the stairwell that's supposed to take me up. So I still can't find it. I hope this is it. Because this is the release door right here. So when prisoners get released, they're going to come through this door. But we'll see that later. Right now, this is the North Tower, which has various security levels. It's a lot more locked down. It's a lot more strict. So entering the pod requires going through two doors. It's set up the same way up here as it would be down. So let's go to 8N. So when we say 8N or 8 North, we have to come up to 3N, which is 2 North, which is 3 North, and transfer to this stairwell, which will take us all the way up to the top of the prison. They have a word for it in the sky. And the reason why... If you look at the third number on the coordinates counter, you can clearly see it's just only going up. It's not really, there's no end in sight. I know you must be getting dizzy, but we're finally up top. I'm kind of dizzy. 170. So basically, you're, you're, you're at the top of the prison. So if you're on if you're being housed on AN, notice how there's extra bars on everything. Look at these bars. And uh, then you have to go through two doors to get into the pod. And uh, then look at this. It's all bars. So basically you are kind of sort of getting incarcerated within the incarceration. Look at the guard's desk. It's even barred up even more. You're all the way at the top of the prison. So you're basically in the sky. The lights are usually off because these prisoners are only allowed out of their cell for one hour a day to walk around in here. There is no coming out into the day room. This is a complete lockdown. These are supposed to be single man cells, not double. But of course, um, if you're if you are sent here, which is maximum security, this is where the worst of the worst comes. This is where all the murders, all the rapists. Believe it or not, not even all rapists end up on this floor. Rapists go ends up downstairs. That's where rapists go. Rapists are put on 7N, which that ward is strictly for sex offenders. So, when you end up on 7N, that's different than being on 8N. Because being on 8N, it's a lot more hellish than um, 7N. But rapists, the only time they end up on 8N is when they're a child predator. The reason why they could end up on AN, that is actually one of the most violent crimes known to man. I don't know how it is in your country, but here in the United States, you have three violent crimes. The first most violent crime you could commit, killing somebody. The second most violent crime you could commit, raping a minor. The third violent crime you could commit is raping somebody that isn't a minor. So, with these classifications, you have to be able to have places to house these people. And 
You see how our levels just drop in? Once you're down here, once you come through these doors, you have the maximum security yard. Let's go and see the colossal scale of what we're looking at. This building is so tall, it's 16 stories high, 8 pods stacked on top of each other. And then you see how tiny the windows are. These are just windows that lets light into the pod at all. So, we have to um, know how serious a place like this is. You don't joke around when it comes to ending up in jail. Now, this looks, if anything, more like a prison than a jail. But really, this is technically a jail, not a prison. When you are being released, let's just say the happy day when you release. It doesn't matter what tower you're in you're going to end up on this hallway and everyone goes to this door. Remember, once you're released, you're no longer a prisoner. Release starts once you walk through this door. So you're a prisoner until you walk through this door or that one over there. Once you're in this room, you're no longer a prisoner. Some prisons will have that you're still a prisoner until you've walked out the building, but Juveniles come through this door. Adult come through this door. The first thing you're going to do upon release is most likely go through visitation to speak to whoever's supposed to pick you up, speak to whoever else custody is supposed to go to. You can also come here on normal standard issue days for, let's say, for example, if you're just regular visiting, even though usually this is done digitally. You don't cross this point if you are not leaving the jail, or else you could get charged with escape. So, you will come here to the property office 24 hours before the date of your discharge. You will have your property put in these chests back here. You will receive your property. You will check out, get all of your paperwork, so you're being released from the jail. You get all your documents, you get your court orders, everything you're supposed to do, all of your appointments. So if you got if you got injured in jail and you have follow-up medical appointments, all of that is going to be done as well. And uh, then all of your information is going to get updated. The jail is going to call somebody for you to for them to come and pick you up. If you are under the age of 21, they have to call your parents. So here's how it works. If you're under the age of 18, you have to have a family member to come and get you if you're coming from the juvenile side. This goes up until you're 21 if you're coming from the juvenile side. If they cannot find somebody to get you, you will stay until you're 21. Not here, but you'll be in the system until you're 21. If for any reason you're an adult at 18, 19, 20, even 17, if you're in the adult side, then you do not have to have somebody to come and get you. Sometimes it's in court order. Say if you have a restraining order, you have to be in the custody of someone. They have to come and get you. Then you can't leave until they come and pick you up. So once you have all your documents and court orders and once you have all of your property back and once you go into this room, you could change in this room. Sometimes you'll wait in here until whoever is coming for you picks you up. Once they have done this, you will then come out here and wait for your family member. So now when you're in this waiting area, you're no longer a prisoner you're just a member of the public that's waiting for another member of the public to come and get you now once you have been released you get on the elevator you go upstairs much nicer and then you're gonna go through this door walk down this hallway come back around and then the public entrance is gonna be right behind one of these walls once we finish building it now let's um because it's been 34 minutes we are not going to do any further with the jail tour 
one day I'll come back with the juvenile side, one day I'll discuss programs, but I really just wanted to show you the booking process that entails with the jail. So, of course, it's a very secure place because guess what? It has to be. Now, rearranging the housing units was probably the most difficult part because this jail being a um, jail in the United States, it has to be Pura compliant. So that basically means Pura means Prison Rape Prevention Act. So of course, rape is a very common thing in prison. They even have the saying, do not drop the soap because uh, you'll get raped while trying to pick it up. So prison rape is a very common thing. And to prevent that, they have the Prison Rape Compliance Act. Guards, no guards sleeping with the inmates. That's actually a big problem in prison and in jails. And then, of course, definitely keep inmates that are sexually attracted to each other apart. Just keep them the hell away from each other. Officers, this is the route the officers take. Their cars are parked here. Again, these are City of Melchizedek police cars. Over here is the juvenile side. So if you're under the age of 18, then you will go through this door. If you're over the age of 17, you will go through that door. But everybody all at once comes through the Sally Port door. Of course, these are two... KRTA, which is the public transit agency, that's their cars. So they patrol the train system. This just leads you back into juvenile booking. But um, once you're out, you're free. You're free. I mean, these trees kind of don't make it look like it. But really, you're free. You could go wherever you want. I mean, it's a, it's a big place. So with that being said, have a good day, and may God bless you.